I think I always knew I was going to be an artist, but I didn't know would it be painting in hindsight. And I started painting when I was 25. But it would have been touch and go, was I going to be a sculptor or a painter? This space was uh, belonged to um, uh, a sculptor, a religious sculptor. I really like the feel of it, you know. I, I like the fact that it's a sculptor's studio, it's, but it's really got the light of a painter's studio as well. I mean, the light is just incredible. I've actually never seen a studio with such good light. <laughs> It's me is what I see really, because um, you know I, I'd be walking my dog, and then you just see things, you know. And it's nice when you're walking; you see a lot more when you're walking than when you're driving. And, like the docks in Cork have some really nice chimneys, really nice vertical chimneys, and they, they change according to the time of day and the shadows on them change. But every now and again, you get these big ships that come in, and they have these massive, big, round kind of rubber kind of like uh, science fiction kind of invading army ships are just kind of plonked on the pier. I like them, I find them really kind of sculptural as well. Paolo Cello was the inventor of perspective, I suppose. I would consider him to be probably the inventor of perspective in art. And Paolo Uccello did this really lovely painting in the National Gallery in London called The Battle of San Romano. That the centrepiece in the panel in London has this mercenary and he's wearing a big plume. And the plume is there, he's so cocky, he's not even wearing armor, he's wearing like some kind of canvas hat. But that plume has all these like patterns in it. And because Paolo Uccello was so interested in kind of geometric patterns, I took those, I started drawing geometric patterns that are in some of the paintings. But then the more I started using these, the more I started seeing them in nature again, which is a funny thing. It's like a painting shows you what's in nature. And like, there's a bridge I walk on with sometimes, and then if the light is right, because it's a mechanical bridge, you have these like really kind of intricate patterns on the ground as well and in the bridge, combating the rounded biomorphic shapes that are in there of the sculptures with these more pointed geometric patterns that are usually underneath. Because of this Paolo Uccello painting, I've discovered all these other Italian masters that I never even knew existed that are just brilliant. So, I mean, it's just, you'd need four lifetimes and about ten apprentices, really, to get through half the things that you'd like to get through, you know. This painting is taking a long time, really. It's taking about 14 months. It started with these really tight little lines in here, and, um, and then I washed it with orange, and, I, and then I had these kind of kind of dainty little pinks in here, these little dots. And then I, uh, I remember I did this big solid sculptural shape here in white. But I like the way you get this kind of texture in, in, in that mark there, where you can see the, um, the brush stroke. And then all that gets rubbed out. Do you know that drip that goes across the middle, that yellow drip that's going across the middle? That's because sometimes, you know, the painting might be vertical for a month while you're working on it. Then it goes horizontal for another few weeks and then it might go upside down. And that's how it works, really. You know, you keep moving it from all angles until... So sometimes you have a drip going right through the middle. And it's mad, really. I have, like, this idea of, like, space, you know? Like, when you look at a piece like that, you have, like... You have a real depth in it and, a, and a space. I, that's what I'd like to get, really, that idea that you have something that's in it in entirety. It looks very busy, but it's actually quite calm. And then what happens is the very last thing I did on that piece was I got really frustrated with it there about four months ago, and I put that Indian green on it again over there, and then I did those yellow dots on top of the Indian green. And the reason I did that was because um, I just found the whole thing was becoming too sculptural. You just kind of instinctively say, oh, look at that. And then what happens is you, see, you think you like the shape or something, so you just paint it in because you like it, you know? I think there's an element of kind of liking what you're doing as well. I actually put on the paint, but then I rub it off. And I, it's a constant process of kind of taking the layers away as well as putting them on. And then you might have to completely change the piece and put a kind of a wash, like a filter, a smoky filter over the colours you've already done. So then you usually, a good trick is you turn them in towards the wall and forget about them if you can. 
and then go back to them a few weeks later or a few months later and um, and you re-entry into the piece again and I think they need time to settle themselves as well I think they need to sort themselves out you know and then you go back and then you have a nice moment and it's done